How are you doing today, Coach Walker? I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing well, and uh, obviously, it's it's uh, you made this transition to go up to uh, Division Two football in 2019. What has been the last couple or few years for you, like navigating that COVID time as head, as a head football coach at a college? Well, it's definitely been uh, a learning experience. Uh, it's a you know, really good experience. I learned so much and uh, got to meet and work with so many great people. So uh, it's, it's been a it was really a good move for me. So, Coach, you uh, decide to come back to regain the or retake the position as a head football coach at Martinsburg, and I, I think the first question is, I guess, why why decide to make this move? Uh, because a lot of people, when you think of coaching, you know, it's a, it's a, always a job where people are looking for their next job to move up, and most people would consider moving from Division Two to moving down. Uh, so, why make this move, and what? led you to want to come back to Martinsburg? Oh, there's a lot of reasons. Um, you know, Division II, some Division II schools are, are, are not on the same level as others. And, uh, you know, so I don't really consider it a, a, a move backward or a move down. Um, it may look that way on paper. But, um, you know, for me, uh, there, there's professional reasons and there's personal reasons. And professionally, I felt like that, um, you know, Concord is not uh, a place really conducive for, for football. Uh, it's, I, I don't, I don't want to make that, I don't want it to sound bad, but, um, you know, there's just a lot of things going on right now with, with, uh, budget cuts and scholarship cuts and, um, a tuition raising, which creates a scholarship cut. And, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's just a tough time. But for me, the main reason, uh, I wanted to come back is, you know, I've learned um, over the years, especially the last couple of years, uh, you know, life's too short not to be happy. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my family and friends are up there and people that I care about, and people that care about me. And I just felt like it was time for me to come home. And this, this opportunity came and, um, you know, I, it was just something that I felt like I needed to do. And I miss living in the Panhandle. I miss Martinsburg and I, I miss my, my people. So now that we know the reason why, I guess, when did it really dawn on you that this was the uh, route that you wanted to go to return to Martinsburg? Well, I, I always felt like I was going to come back into the area when I, when I retired or whenever I was finished, you know, when my job was finished here. Um, and I was just going to live there and, and, you know, find a job or whatever. And, uh, you know, then as I started talking to, with Coach Sherman and, uh, you know, me and him, he, you know, we're, we're like family. I've known him since he's been like five years old. And we'd always kind of joke around saying, hey, let's get the band back together. Let's, let's, you know, let's get back and do the things that we were doing. And then I never really thought about it till just, uh, you know, a few months ago we were talking. And, uh, and I told him I thought about coming back. And, and he's like, well, why don't we just make this thing happen? And I'm like, well, you know, I, I'm all for it. So it just kind of fell into place. Uh, and I never thought that I would be back coaching on the sidelines there when I left, but, uh, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to do it again and, uh, and really, uh, you know, just savor it and, and appreciate it. And, uh, you know, just to be able to reconnect with, uh, you know, everyone that, that I was connected with before. And, uh, coach Walker, you bring up coach Sherman. He's now joining us on the phone and, uh, you know, coach Sherman, we'll bring you in here at this part of the conversation since coach Walker mentioned you about bringing the band back together, uh, you know, we had talked to you in the fall and you had kind of mentioned something of, of different happening. And that's what we thought this was procedurally. Uh, but it, it ends up being bringing the band back together. And what does Coach Walker mean bringing back to the program? Well, it's, it's extremely exciting. It's, it's, um, it's, it's just a great thing. Um, I mean, I've known Coach since I was a kid. I was his water boy, ball boy, played for him, came back and was assistant. And then, I was fortunate enough to take over for him, and uh, you know, I don't, I don't look at it as a kind of a step in the side. It's just kind of a step in this B side, and uh, you know, we're going to going to continue what we had before, and you know, I think we all get better from it. I think I got better the last three years as as a coach from the things I had to do as a head coach, and he got better for being a college coach. So I think it just brings uh, a lot of excitement to our program because of, I think everything's going to be better. Coach Sherman, I think, uh, you know, a lot of people would probably look at this from the outside and I guess 
wonder why you would want to step aside after being the assistant coach to Coach Walker for a long time. So what led to that decision for you uh, to want to bring him back and decide to uh, have him take over with the head coach title? Well, I mean, I wanted my friend back. I wanted Coach to be back, and I wanted him to be back in some capacity. And I think we, we spoke on it a little bit, and he talked about maybe even coming back and taking on an assistant role or, you know, possibly even being back in the area, but maybe coaching in Virginia and, do you know, double dipping in his retirement in Virginia. And, yeah, you know, every time he said something like that, it kind of just made me feel a little sick to my stomach because I just don't feel like that's the way it should be. I mean, this guy's been my mentor, um, his family. And, you know, I, I think that it was him being the head guy and, and me being the assistant the way it should be. I mean, we've never really been real big on titles, and that's something he taught me a long time ago is, you know, we're just here for kids, and we're just trying to do the best we can for, for our team and our family. We have a great staff that's, that's around us, and I just thought that that's the way it should be. I'll make this a two-part question and start with you, Coach Walker. During your time at Concord as the head coach, what are some maybe new things that you learned in your coaching career during your tenure there? And then also for Coach Sherman, what did you learn uh, differently, I guess, being a head coach rather than an assistant coach? I'll start that off with uh, I think I'm a lot better uh, I'm a lot better coach now a lot better person I think I'm the one thing I've learned I'll be able to better help our athletes uh, that want to go on to play college um, football or, or just want to go to college in general I'm more equipped to help them with that having to having went through all the uh, the other end of the recruiting process and working with the NCAA and things that we have to deal with on this end I, I'm going to be more equipped to help any young man that wants to try to make that trip or make that leap to the next level. Um, you know, and then all the other things you deal with, with, um, you know, with recruiting and compliance. And there's just so many things out there as a high school coach, I was never really made aware of so much. And then I've learned a, a, a tremendous amount since I've been down here, but I think it's going to help me uh, help our young guys so much more than what we were able to before. And how about you, uh, Coach Sherman? What did you learn during your time as the head coach? I think just the responsibility. I know being an assistant before, even even being there for 16 years, was you know even though you think you know what the head guy's going through, and you want to make suggestions, and you want to you know say this and say that, until the buck stops at you, you don't realize what all goes into it with boosters parents, schedules, you know, I think I learned a lot. Um, you know, I always had Coach Walker there to kind of filter things with, with our even our offensive plays, calling each play. And when you don't have anybody else there and, and uh, you know, all that uh, wrestling your shoulders and it's your responsibility, you know, I think you, uh, you learn a lot from that kind of stuff. When does the uh, coaching transition uh, take place? And, Coach Sherman, what is your role going to be? Okay, so I didn't officially resign until June 1, and I did that on purpose. So to, just to make sure we had enough time to get, you know, the hiring process finished um, and then to make sure that, you know, we got through our flex days in May and everything was, um, you know, good to go with it. But uh, not being, I plan on continuing to coach, and I know we got to work out some details with, with that as far as everything. But I should stay a, a Berkeley County employee. I plan to do a couple substitute days. And, uh, you know, I plan on continuing to coach and, and hopefully coaching the same things on the field that, uh, that I'm coaching now. Uh, this, I guess, is a question for both of you with Coach Walker now taking over as the head coach and Coach Sherman, you now going back to the assistant coach. Is it going to be still Coach Sherman calling plays offensively? What will the uh, relationship, I guess, be like for the team as a whole? Are you asking me or Coach Sherman? Uh, wh whichever one is wanting to okay. answer well, the question, I guess. Uh, the way we did things before, yeah, Coach Sherman is, is, is the offensive coordinator, and obviously, you know, I've got a hand on everything that goes that goes on. But there's not going to be a lot of big changes schematically with what we do and how we do things. It's pretty much the same plan we've had for years. Um, 
things I've picked up on this level, I think I can bring back schematically to help uh, to help our team. I picked up uh, I picked up some things the last three years. I think will really be beneficial to us. But you know, Coach Sherman's responsibilities really aren't going to change a whole lot as far as the X's and O's goes. Uh, I'm just going to be stepping in place to to deal with things. Uh, the manager, management of the team and, and day-to-day operational stuff. Coach Walker, how do you think that will help the guys that haven't played for you uh, with this adjustment? You know, you guys obviously having a similar offense and, and things like that. Nothing's really going to change in terms of X's and O's. No, there, there won't be much change with that. I mean, I think the thing that uh, for me is just, uh, I'm, I'm really big on relationships. I'm really big on, on kids obviously working hard and doing the right thing. And, and I know Coach Sherman is as well. So, you know, a lot of things, I think we work together really well. Um, and I think it'll be an easy transition for the kids. I don't think they, uh, and I know some of the kids, a lot of these kids were uh, in middle school and, uh, you know, seventh, eighth grade, you know, when I was there. So, uh, and I actually know a few of them. So I think it'll be an easy transition. This one will go to uh, Coach Sherman. Coach, we know um, there was a opening into the schedule for the upcoming year. You guys only had nine games on there, and it was recently learned that the Highland Springs game is uh, believed to no longer be on the schedule now. So does that mean that you guys are down to eight games, or has there been one or two games recently added to the schedule now for the upcoming year? Well, that's an interesting question that I really can't answer at this point because it's probably hourly um, changing as of today um, with a couple games that I think we thought we had one. We may not have one. I think we may, we may have one scheduled for week three. So that's something that uh, <clears throat> Coach Walker and, and uh, Davis Moore are going to have to really delve into here in the next week or two. And, um you know, of course, I'll help them as much as I can. But, uh, yeah, we're scouring, scouring the East Coast and even the North America for games the last couple of months. Has, has not been easy on any of us. And uh, it's one of those things that, like I said, it's changing today hourly. So I really can't answer that exactly. I think today, as of today, we have nine. We were hoping to have ten. But, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, just a good question. And this one's for Coach Walker. And Coach Walker, in venturing to college, uh, you had to deal with the transfer portal a little bit. And uh, June 1, that's coming with the one-time transfer rule to West Virginia high schools. How do you think that, that having you having gone up to college is going to maybe help you deal with that a little more, knowing the comings and goings of players and, you know, kind of in the heads of college players, how that could translate to the high school game? Well, I'm, 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 I was in favor of the portal. Uh, it benefited us here at Concord. And, and I, I'm, I think if a player's not happy where they're at and if they want to go, let them go. And I, I, I really don't want a kid playing for me that doesn't want to be there. So, um, and, and we, had, we lost kids here at Concord. We gained, we gained a lot more than we lost. But, uh, no, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, I think, I think at the, at the high school level, obviously, uh, you're dealing more with parents than you are at this level. And I think parents will be making those decisions, you know, for their teenage sons. Whereas in college, you know, they're, those guys, they're mostly adults and they make their own decisions. But, uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's, there's going to be um, bumps in the road in this thing for everybody that's, that it deals with across the state. But uh, I'm sure in time it'll, it'll be a smooth transition and kids will – make uh, educated choices and and do and go and do what's best for them and their family coach would it be weird to play for play in the or coach in the stadium that is named after you now well i never thought about it till you just asked me that <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah i guess it will be kind of odd I, I i've never given it any thoughts uh, but uh i definitely don't want to do uh you know do anything that uh you know that I, I want to continue for us to have the success that Coach Sherman continued doing. I think he did a, a, an outstanding job, and uh, we just want to come in and get better and, and continue the, with the success and try to build upon it. Before we let you go, Coach, I'll let you now give a uh, 
or give you the opportunity to say anything that I guess hasn't been said that you'd like to say to not only uh, Martinsburg, but also to the uh, fans that might be tuning in for Concord? Well, I'm, I'm excited to come back home. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that I left because I felt like I want, I needed a new challenge. I needed to challenge myself. I always, I, if I hadn't taken the job down here, I always wondered if I could have done it. I did it. I did okay at it. Um, turned the program around. But at the end of the day, it's about being happy. And uh, the happiest moments have been up there. So uh, I just feel like it's not an ego thing for me. I don't need to have that label as a college coach. I want to get back where I make more of an impact. When you're dealing with college athletes, nine times out of ten, when they come into my office, they want more scholarship money. They want you to get them out of trouble or they, they need something from you. You deal with high school kids. It's a true relationship. You know, they need your help. Uh, you can have a, a real good hand in molding them and making them get the goals and stuff that they want. And uh, I think you make more of a difference. So, and down here, I don't know that I made that much of a difference. I mean, it may, we did maybe wins and losses, but there's so much more to the game of football than wins and losses. So uh, I want to make a difference, and uh, I want to come back and get this thing going and have fun and enjoy life. Coach Sherman, final one for you before we let you both go. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday, June 8th, the uh, Bulldog Golf Classic. Uh, just want to pump that a little bit for the uh, people listening. Yeah, uh, sponsored by Team Quintez, June 8th, Golf Classic. Go to MartinsburgFootball.com, hit the QR code, put a team in. It's going to be a great time. Crest Creek, you can't play there unless you remember. So a lot of people want to play there. Um, I know I'm excited to, to get my team in and play. And uh, we've we've rented extra carts so we can have a couple more teams because we've been filling up pretty quickly. So make sure you get your team in. Also, this Saturday we're going to have our youth combine, and now I can announce that the uh, keynote speaker at that combine will be Dave Walker. So nine to twelve at the doghouse this uh, this weekend. Come bring K through eight kids out and um, get laser time in the forty pro shuttle. Uh, just kind of be like a little little NFL combine. Coach Dave Walker, Coach Britt Sherman, our guest. Thanks for the time, coaches. Thank you guys very Thank much. You, fellas.